You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. This is what I used to thought that he had good friends, but yeah, not not really now because the, the amount of stuff that... Then the ironic thing is about that is all his friends would do it as well. But the most ironic thing about that, their girlfriends would do it as well because I went out with one of their girlfriends who was in their crowd, so I know what both sides do. So they're all at it. Both of them are wrongings for doing that, brother. Do you know what She's I mean? Six months pregnant. And, and while you're still sleeping with him. And then the weekend after we come back and get married. And this would have never, ever happened. I would have never have done anything like this if if it wasn't so severe or... Yeah, it's just a bad thing to happen. So I'm just going all guns blazing now. I could name 10 footballers that she'd been with. Did you know this at the time or was it after? No, it was after. One of them, and I'm with... Some, after it all happened, we went to Portugal and I'm with two naughty lads. And as I've walked in one of the bars, one of the guys is stood right behind the door with his mate. I've walked to the bar, and as I've walked to the bar, I've turned, and all you can see is the door shutting. <laughs> and then got... That's nuts. That was Phil Bardsley. What was that? So that was yeah. two, that was it, was, what about Dwight York, Phil Bardsley? I was nicking Kit, but that wasn't the story. The story was... <laughs> um, Boom, we're on, and today's guest, we've got Rodri Giggs. How are you, oh, brother? I'm all right, you? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks for coming. No, happy to be here. Yeah, good, man. You've got your own podcast as well, which we'll plug straight away. Yeah, well, it's just been doing it for now about four or five years. Shoot the Defence, mm -hmm. me, Stell, and uh, Steve has just joined, a, a well-known coach, and managed Rochdale, but a well-known coach with Manchester City for a long time. Yeah, enjoying it? It's brilliant, I love it, yeah. You're looking well? Yeah, looking well, yeah. Nice shave for you. Yeah, try to look the part. <laughs> <laughs> for once. Yeah. So obviously your your brother, superstar Ryan Giggs, for your life as well. You've also been in prison and all the shit that was always in the press ten years ago with the affairs and shit. But I want to get a bit about you and we'll go right back to the start, where you grew up and how it all began. I was born in Cardiff, uh, nineteen seventy seven, and then nineteen eight we moved to Salford. My dad played rugby. Moved to uh, Swinton, played for Swinton, and uh, just went from there. Really, how was that? How older was your brother than you? Uh, three and a half years. Three, three and a half years. What was schooling like? Schooling. Yeah, yeah. School was good. School. Was good. It was hard because you know I look at the streets now around Salford, and, and there's black faces everywhere. But when we was there, we you know my dad was black, and we was a mixed race family, so it, it was tough at the start but you know it was back in them days it's, it's changed a lot now you know it was, it was gollywog jam jar Ed, it was all them, them kinds of stuff that you had to put up with and you just fight your way through it a lot of racism back in the day then yes just because there wasn't a lot of black people around in salford like i was at a school of 1200 people and probably two black people in there and i was one of them so and that's what you were putting that race as colored Coloured, half cast. Back then it was so yeah, but yeah, you just it weaned itself out as I got older. You just fight away for it, like I say. And people, if you fight, and they won't eventually wouldn't say it, it won't go. Would you go become away. very defensive then, just trying yeah. to stick up for yourself? Yeah. Did your brother stick up for you a lot? Not really. No, no. I didn't really uh, tell him. Really, I just dealt with it on my own. Didn't really tell my mum. Didn't really tell my dad. Just dealt with it on my own, really. Who was that? Yeah, it was, it was young, talking like 10, 11, 12. So you're young, but it just strengthens your mentality, I suppose. Crucial years though, eh? but It was, because my dad left as well, so, and that's when it all come tumbling down, because you know, that was my discipline, and went, once he went, and then my mum kind of got in a new relationship, and that really didn't work out with me, so it was, and then that's the, the, down, the start of the downfall of just doing what I wanted and just being naughty, really. Do you feel as if the shackles come off that your mum couldn't control you so you kind of had a free-for-all? 
not not necessarily. I think I was just missing my dad, and you know, I didn't really. Although my stepfather was 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 good to my mum, I I didn't really get on with him. You know, it wasn't his fault. He was a good man, but it was just he wasn't my father. And yeah, he, you know, back then it was it was it was accepted, but you know, used to take a few beatings off him, and I you know, what's the right word? Um. I don't know what the right word is. Yeah, I don't like him for it. Your stepdad used to do that? Yeah. To but you not, or your not, mum? Not, you know, even when I was naughty, not mass, not every week. It was just, you know, when I was naughty, you'd get a beating, but I, I didn't like it because he wasn't my father. My mum would just stand there and watch. Why did your dad leave? Did you ever speak to him oh, after he was, that? He was, he was abusive, drunk to my mum. Mum took a load of abuse, used to beat her up. Um, when I was 10, 11, I think it, they'd just split up and he was taking me out for my birthday and um, he picked me up and we're driving down the street and he's seen my mum going to work. He's pulled in the bus stop. He's just said, give me one minute. He's gone out. I've seen him like tussling and then he's come back, took my birthday money off me, gone to say, go and see your mum. I've gone and seen my mum and she's broken nose and he's given her a dig and so... Yeah, and then I didn't see him for for years after that. Did you eventually see him though? Did you reach out see, to him? Probably about five, six years ago. Just recently? Yeah. The first time? Yeah. How was that? Uh, yeah, it was all right. Weird, all right. strange. It was. Spoke to him little bits, but not massively. He sent me a letter when I was in prison, which was a bit too late. <laughs> but um, no, it is. Uh, yeah, he's, he's like apologised, you know, it's like 25 years I didn't speak to him. Mm-hmm. So. How was it for you then being 14, 15, when your brother then was playing for Man United? Did that, that become a lot more pressure on you, being, you felt as if you, you wanted to achieve <coughs> yeah, well, that you, level? Yeah, your name doesn't become Roger, then it becomes Ryan Giggs' his brother. Yeah. And that just went on for, for years, so you just come to deal with it. But at the, at the start of it, you're excited, you're happy for him, you, you, you're buzzing. You know, it was more of a dream... For, for me to see him play football and is what is that it was for me to play football. Because you look at the old photos, man, every photo you're in, you, you look so happy when you're together. You look the happiest, as if you're proud. You're the proud big brother. Yeah, I always have been. That's why I've followed him and stuck up for him the whole whole of my life. It's just, that's what you did, and that's did, what you did. Did you ever feel like the outsider from a young age? Um, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Was that what made you rebel? Um, kind of like I was my my dad's child and Ryan was my mum's child. I think that's the way it was, and you know that's the way it carried on. And yeah, difficult then. Yeah, it was difficult. But... Because I heard you were a player back in the day. Is that correct? I hear what's the story? I hear that you could have been better than your brother if you stuck in that. That, that, that was a story, yeah. But I never really was into it like he was. I was a if my dad stuck around. I would have played rugby. I was a better rugby player than I was football, but. I just love sports and didn't really think that I could do it as a living, just played it. And then that's when I got expelled from school. What for? Uh, just a number of things, really. It was just a, a accumulation of things in the end. And then I was about 15, coming up to 16, and Torquay got in contact saying, will you go on trial? So, but before I went, my mum says, well, what are you going to do? I says, I don't know. She says, well, you're going to have to get a job. I said, what do you mean? She says, well, you're not in school, you're going to have to get a job. Said, Fucking hell. Not like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I went to Torquay for, I thought, it's lovely here. Eh? Beach, beautiful, it was hot. And yeah, just ended up playing there and they signed me for a two-year contract, well, apprenticeship. How was that? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. What happened? Well, the story was that I was nicking kit. <laughs> well, this was uh, the story. Is it the Front page of the papers. Yeah. I was nicking kit, but that wasn't the story. The story was, um, I was at Diggs first of all, and obviously I was coming in late and stuff like that. So they moved me to the chairman's daughter and husband and their family. So we used to go to the chairman's uh, houses for house for Sunday dinner and stuff like that. And I've ended up going there. And he used to have a big fucking wallet. He used to have loads of money in it. So I tended to take £500 out. 
and I've, I've given it my roommate and I've told a couple of lads and then that lad got caught dipping. When we was at, at, when there's first team matches, the apprentices had to give the cups and teas for the, the half time. Mm-hmm. So they go into the, the away change rooms. But one of the players was dipping in the players' fucking pockets and he got caught. So to, to get him off that, he told what I'd done. And then... I was the same. I, when I played with Hibs at 16, we used to sell Happy Hibbies, I think they were called at half time. But me and another boy used to get another book. So when people were buying another ticket, we used to take the tickets out the other book and put them in the bucket, but they would never win. So we're making maybe 30, 40 quid and I get it. But somebody, I, the, I think the other boy stuck me in. I think he was caught and stuck me in because I ended up getting loaned out straight away and then ended up getting released. But that it's funny that though, that always try to cut corners. Always try to cut corners. But I was I was coming on because all between like 12, from 11 to 15, I probably hadn't played a lot of football where I was playing every day. And by the time I was 16, I was playing in the first team matches. So I was coming on. How old? 16? 16. And then I started coming on and then all that happened and then that was it. Didn't kick a butt football for two years. Career ended. Well, supposedly they, they asked me back, but I never got told that. I got told that a few years later. But my mum didn't tell me or she obviously didn't want me to go back. But if I did go back there, they would have earned a lot of money because I wouldn't have let them down again like that. I would have made sure that was... Did you feel like a fail- failure at a very young age after that? I just felt like, like they'd let me, I'd let them down because they was good to me, Torquay. Mike Bates and the chairman, um, Paul Crompton, Donald Reardon, uh, they were all good to me there. And it, was, it was just a, it was one of the... Fewer things that I regret. You know, I don't regret many things, but that's one of the, the top of the list. But you're only a kid as well. Like mm. it's, it's do or die back in that age. But when I come back, it's front page, Manchester United news, sun, front page and everything. So I'm going to have to deal with all that crap as well. So you have to deal with that. Every time I got in trouble, I put a step out of line, it was front page. Or if I turn up in court, there'd be cameras. Now, I'm not going to put my head down. They'd go, Roger, I go fuck off and they'd just be in the papers and I look like a right fucking dick. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? But if I'd seen it and I were like, what the fuck is him? I'm like, fuck off. Yeah. But did you, is that because all the pressure as well because your brother was flying high? I just, or were you just thinking, I, fuck it? I just didn't give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you regret that then? Yeah. Yeah. What would, what happened with your life after football? Well, after I come back then I was, I was messing about and then you drinking drugs? No, not really. I want. I want to re- like I was saying before. I'm not really a big drink. I don't really like it. I obviously do it because it's sociable, but I don't really like it. So then, uh, we're just messing about odd jobs, and then I went to Livingston, stayed there for about six or seven months, and after that, I come back, and that's when I ended up in London working as a estate agent in London. How was that? Yeah, it was good. It's good. And then that come all crashing down with a fake shake. Why? You know, not the, no, I don't know. There's um, the fake shake, the one who got put in prison, you know, Chalisa. Yeah. He did the exact same to me. Mm-hmm. Fuck you court, over. Minstrel Street. Oh. I got crown what caught happened? here. So I'm as a state agent. Yeah. And uh, Mazir Mahmood, he's called. So fake name then? Fake shake. Yeah. Yeah, Maz- well, that's his name, mm-hmm. Mah- Mazir Mahmood, but it was like a fake shake. So we. He's contacting me saying his his family are, are in town, his his nephews. So he's like a ta- Saudi prince or some kind of high sa- Saudi prince. So he's got servants. I meet him at a uh, a penthouse in Canary Wharf. Servants opening the door, people giving him tea. He's got all the cloak on with a shisha tells me the story that his, his nephews have got in college and he was looking for apartments for him but we can't be seen in the West End because you know one of the family members is, is not very well can we uh, do you know anywhere where we can go out so I said yeah we've, we was a corporate member of a lap dancing place literally around the corner from the office so I used to take him there but he's in the meantime I'm taking him to flats and he's saying yeah I'll have them free flats and I'll pay you a year money up front I'm thinking, fucking hell, this is good. This is all the commission when I get here and I've got to keep this guy sweet. So when we're going into his lap dancing every night, he keeps asking me for drugs. I'm, just, I'm not from, I'm not from round here. I don't know, really know anyone. If I really wanted to, I could, really probably could have, but I'm going out of my way for drugs. I don't really know anyone. 
And he kept on badgering me and badgering me. This was like going on for like three or four weeks. I said, I don't know anyone. Anyway, I'm going back to Manchester. So I tell him I'm going back to Manchester. He, he says, oh, we'll come up and we'll come see you. We can meet your brother, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, no problem. So I'm trying to keep him sweet to get this deal, get this all his commission. So we get to Manchester, meet me, meet Sarkin outside the Marriott. Then he says, right, where are we going tonight? I said, I'm going here. I'm not and I'm saying I'm not going where you're going. But can you get us some drugs? I said, yeah, no problem. Ring my ring a pal or ring someone who knew. He's come to the, the Marriott. I've gone out and got it, brought it in. Fucking cameras everywhere in the room. Boom, boom, boom. Fuck Next you. minute, I'm a pimp. I'm a fucking drug dealer. <laughs> I'm a drug dealer. But in the in the in halfway through it, he's made us get some escorts and bring them back to his hotel. But what he's he's obviously cameraed up the ho- the the room. But I've took the bird in the bathroom, and then my mates come in and gone in the bathroom. Not about that for in the bedroom. So you couldn't, you probably had that all set up in the bedroom, but I took her in the bathroom. So all a big set up for what? Just to fuck you over? I was just working as a state agent. It wasn't a drug deal, anything. It was just, and that was it. I love that job. So he was just what? Just uh, just working in the press? He was. He's done it hundreds of times. What a scumbag. Went to court, and then the judge threw it out, saying he needs to be investigated because... It's like entrapment kind. I don't know about yeah, the entrapment yeah, kind of law, yeah. but it's like you're. He's. It's not as if you're bringing them. It's not as if you're fucking trafficking girls and selling kilos of coke. He was just wanting. What? How, how much drugs was he wanting? Grams. What, what? What made it more? What made it? What's the word? Is um, the police were after, were dying to get me because they'd had a police surveillance on me for like two or three weeks. And they pulled me outside uh, Deansgate Locks. Have you ever been out in Deansgate yeah. Locks? Well, there was a place called Loaf when it first opened. And they pulled me out there. And like an August night, it was like nine o'clock at night. It was fucking rammed all the way down, queuing up. And they pulled me out, about 10 of them, and strip searched me, turned me boxer shorts outside. Because they thought I had drugs on me. But I didn't. So you're just trying to do him a turn because you think you're going to get commission? Not realising it's just a big scam just to fuck you over and get you in the press. Was that in every front page again? And no, it wasn't because it was Gunu and then the Brixton bombing in London saying it went to like 12 or 13. But it just goes to show you the lengths that people go. I had a George Lambie on last week who was Charles Bronson's son. He used to get a gas van, cut a hole outside of the gas van and all the big, like with Prince Harry, Prince William, used to drive in. And people, the security guards used to fall for it and they're just snapping away. But back in the day, you're talking, what, 50 grand, 100 grand for major stories, major headlines. So people, the paparazzi go to some lengths to, to fuck you over. How how did you deal with all that then, all the stresses and pressures? How did your trust right, issues it was, then? It was, it was, that was the worst one because out of playing football, out of all the jobs I did, I loved that job. Be good I was, at I it. was 19, 20, it was renting 14, 15 apartments a week I was like 19 years 20 years of age on two and a half three grand a week back in them days I loved it company car it was great what? and then it was all, then I got sacked straight away on the spot back home and then six months later a year later I was in prison so what happened the night when you got to jail was it a bottle over someone's head <clears throat> we'd we'd gone into a place called Amazon me and my pal and I'm at the uri- urinal and this guy's come next to me, say, you gigs, his brother, blah, blah, blah. I said, mate, I'm on the piss, do me a favour, leave me alone. Anyway, he's blah, blah. So I've walked out, gone to the other side of the club where I'm in Pallies. He's come over again, blah, 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 blah. We need to get out of here, to me, mate. So we walked out down the stairs, and we're waiting for a cab. But what I'd done is, they didn't serve Budweiser in the, the pub. So when I've walked from the pub where we'd just come from, I had a Budweiser, but I had it only had half left. So I put it behind the bin. And when I come out waiting for the taxi, I remembered it was there and went and grabbed it, drinking. And he's come out again, started blah, blah, blah. And his mates grabbed all of it, it's all kicked off. And his mate grabbed all of it, I just got fuck off. And my mate hits him once and he's just hit his head on the curb. Tooth's come through his mouth and he nearly fucking died, died and everything, yeah. Would you get seven months? Uh, nine. And how was that then? Again, front pages. <laughs> 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 People say I'm daft, but I loved it when I was in there. Yeah. Strange ways. It was, um, yeah, they tried fucking move there as well. They're like clowns. They must have thought like us some 
first day I got there, they put me in with the scrawniest smackhead you could ever think. And the first night, they've spun me cell and strip searched me. They tried. And then Mikodi, after a week, he's gone to Kirken and I'm still there after four weeks. And I had a friend who was a screw in Strange Rays. And I said, what's going on? So he's got in contact with him. Two screws in there were trying to send me to Birmingham just to fuck me out in a fucking shithole. So you got worse, worse treatment and no special treatment because they obviously just who you were. But I, was, I obviously knew people in there and they've got in and thought, yeah, he's fucking buzzing about it. What's he doing? They obviously thought I was going to come in and be fucking like the fat guy from Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> and protection. <laughs> So how was that experience for you to be, did, did, was it more rougher than, more worse treatment because of who you were and who you were, who your family member was than? No, that was the kind of stuff, they were trying to stop play with me mentally, mm -hmm. but yeah. It was Do you feel as if you're always getting fucked over through your life when you look back at it all? You feel like I probably don't look at it like that, but probably, yeah. Don't really go deep into it like that, but if you think about it, probably, yeah. So how does that affect you mentally? It makes you stronger. What about friends and that? Did you have the same friends going through life or were you constantly chopping and changing? Um, well, since uh, that, the affair, the, all, it all come out, there's many people I've not even probably speaking, spoken to, Why associated that? with, just because I'm not trustworthy and just don't trust them. Were you very trustworthy back in the day, though? Like, going into prison I didn't really and think about it. Mm -hmm. I'm very wary what I tell people anyway, so... Well, you... Can, obviously, people get media trained when they've got, like, high... Yeah, I didn't. Did you not have any of no, that shit? No, did the, no. Any family members ever say, look, man, rein it in? Or did you just constantly think, it's not that you're a bad guy, it's just you do daft shit, like, he's all like myself, <laughs> like... It's like the, the, the daft stuff that I was... It's like when I was in London... The daft stuff I got arrested for was like a girl uh, when I broke up with. She'd been she'd been with Ryan once, so it was that was a story in the sun. I bedded the two gigsies, so I've gone up to her house and threw her hammer through a window. No shit stuff like that. Uh, pissed one night and uh, in my mate's car, and I've heard blue sirens, so I've jumped out the car. I can't remember this. I broke into the house, gone upstairs, fell asleep. The police have come in, arrested me. And I've got done for criminal damage. You know, all stuff like that, all stuff when I'm drinking and stuff like that. So just. So this was another girl. So then I went to London. I went, but I, like I said, I went to London. I hadn't been in trouble for two years, and I'm driving my friend home, and the police pull me, and I jump out the car. What the fuck are you pulling me for? Because I think I'm illegal. I'm in a company car, but I had outstanding warrants from the community service and probation. I just fucked off. So the the copper. I never forget his face. He comes back, he comes out of the car and he's like that, laughing, shaking his head. I said, what? He says, you're going to wish you didn't fucking do that. I says, why? He says, you've got an arrest warrant with a no bail. So what the fuck does that mean? He says, you're getting arrested now and you're getting took to Manchester in the morning. Oh. So we get to take to Manchester, get to Salford Courts at half one, get to the courts. The, the van pulls in, the guy goes, what are you doing? He says, we've got a done for the day. You have to bring him back tomorrow. What? He's got a no bail. It's not my problem. Take to Salford Crescent. Went to Salford Crescent and ended up staying there 24 hours as well. So back in the jail? Got, yeah. Saturday morning, I got out and uh, they squashed the community service, quashed the probation, gave me a £500 fine. What What was life like then? Were you working or were you just lost I was cannon? working as a state agent. Still? At the time, yeah. yeah. And like because I just moved away and just kept my head down and, and securing a, a real proper job. Did you think a life would be easier? Going to London away from Manchester. Oh, it, yeah, it was miles better. That's why I loved it so much because no one really cared. And it was so big. No one could give, give a crap who you was. And that's why I enjoyed it, I think. How were you treated in Manchester before you went then? People just always want a piece of you? No, no you, you're always going to get that whenever you, you're going out. I don't know what the fascination is with it. I never could understand it with... Because I'm not a celebrity. I'm not famous. I'm still, even though I've done a... a, a a good advert. I'm just not a celebrity. I'm just not. That advert was class, but we'll touch on that later on. I'm, I'm just, just not. Because mm -hmm. you've done acting as well. What age did you do act? Start acting? No, I did a bit with with Will. Yeah, because you were in a, like a 
uh, film kind of thing, like adverts and stuff. You've been in the advert, but what was the other thing? No, white, was, white something, what was it called? No, White Van Man, yeah. 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 So yeah. what just, was that? Just, just turned out to be an extra, and they ended up starting doing, doing a bit more than they wanted. It was, it was someone who didn't turn up, because my friend Will... Um, Someone hadn't turned up, so he said, do you want to play the role? Said, yeah, right then. Just ended up doing it. It was, it was brilliant. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was really good, yeah. So after London then, when you got, when you lost your job, prison again, what what, what was your life like then? What, when I got out? Yeah. Uh, what did I do when I got out? You just knuckle down and try and get to work and get a job. And what did I do? I, I got my Class 2 licence, so I got my lorry licence, truck licence. And just settled that, trying to settle down. Met Natasha, had a baby, and just that was it for me. I was just like, I was happy. I was settled down. I parted myself out. Didn't really enjoy it anymore. And I would just stay home with the family on the weekends. How old were you? But when you she had... would always go out, mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah, go out. I'll mind the kids. Did, go on. Did you never question that then? No, not really. Cause I was happy just. Not, do what you want with kids yeah did you never get handouts for your brother so everything that I'm doing in my life now that like, I'm doing it to try and build a platform so big that I can now then look after my family did like, well, this never... this is what you, I think you're supposed to do like, like I was saying before we start you know this is a mate's business he started from his from his from scratch on his own he struggled and he struggled and no problem with where you, you you're top it's what you do you help people out and not really. He, he gave me a car that he won, and then I got put into prison. I got him put into prison because I was Ryan Giggs' brother, and he wasn't speaking to me. He didn't come and see me. He didn't give me a letter. Didn't nothing. And then when I got out, he bought me a car. Is so, that disheartening for you? No, but you can understand from you look at all the shit that Man United players actually done Ferguson must have been that good that he was that good a manager that everything was hush hush it's only now that certain things come out of the paper and you go wait a minute they ain't all fucking just they, they ain't all just squeaky clean there's more shit happens in the big teams than they do anywhere else it just gets hid better did you find that did you think that well he was protected he was told yeah he, he of was, course he was protected that, you know Ferguson was like a father figure to him mm-hmm. he, he was his substitute father and, you know, he, he was scared of him and never let him let him down, but he protected him a lot because a lot of the press were scared of Ferguson. They were. Yeah, he's proper. Yeah, so he was no messing about. Man, yeah. like, do you think if you had somebody like Ferguson's status as a manager, you could have potentially oh, went yeah, a good way, like that a father kind, figure, that kind of person, role model? Because you know, he, he was a great person. He wasn't only just a manager, you know. He knew everyone's names, not the young kids... He was a good. He was a great. Still is a great man. But yeah, he was. And that to be schooled and to be, you know, to, for him to take you under the wind wing, it must have been a big help for him. Yeah, but can you understand as well that your brother might not have. He might have been told, "Let like, stay back from the prisons or don't do that because if it's, if it, if they." If yeah, they, I understand that. But if that was me, I'd be saying, "Fuck off!" He's my brother. Yeah, it's straight up. So would I be? But up. maybe that's why we've not but got. This, this is this. This is where. No, me and him differ then because yeah. you know even when he'd done his book, uh, he rings me up and on the one of the headlines of the Sun paper was my jailbird brother, and he <laughs> and, he, and he rings me up saying oh, I apologise. So well, this is your you, you you if you're telling him to write a story, you have it specifically what you what they put in. If they put anything, then they pay you. But he didn't. They just let him run riot. You know, you can't speak to the press, you can't do that, but it's all right for you to promote your book through the sun. Mm-hmm. Using so, your name. Did you go to many games? I used to go home the way for years, for years. So you, oh, the, the amount of scraps I've nearly got in in games as well, because he, he wasn't always great. He used to have some bad times, and the fans were used to be giving it him, and I used to be the umpteen times. I don't know how many, many scraps he used, used to get in. <laughs> I, it was be a nightmare because you'd be right behind me oh fucking gigs he wanked the wells come and be like fucking hell this guy don't shut up I'd always get him behind me 
That's a test for you, though, because yeah. I know you're easy led. <laughs> Mate, shut <laughs> After about 60 minutes, like, shut mm-hmm. the fuck up. How was family life in that then at the start with the missus and the kids? Was it great or was, did you know something was amiss or, or were you in denial? Probably. Probably, yeah. Because, you know, my instinct's good and my instinct said this isn't right from the start but I just went against it. Why? I don't know. don't know. Maybe because she looked good. Do you think it's because you were broken with your dad leaving as well? The pain of accepting that there's going to be another broken relationship because it's, 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 shit goes deep. Oh yeah, that, it? that was, that was, that was, that's why I tried to keep it together because I wanted to, but it just was untenable just in my head of thinking, I can't do this. Was there telltale signs though? Yeah. Yeah. Like what? Oh, there was, there was times when she, the, Years before, there was uh, she was in Marbella, and uh, John Oyster play played for Reading. Another guy was filming her while he was while he was doing something. Uh, you know, there was loads, of, and, and there was murmurs about that. But you just put it back to the back of your mind, just ignore it. How and it, it doesn't help that she only did it because. Um, I'd been in my bed a couple of months before and a bird had been telling her, oh, your boyfriend's been out here she's doing this and that. So she just went, fuck it. Will you? No. No. You seem as if, like, oh, I was listening to this stuff yesterday and obviously I knew you were coming on and it's fucking sad, mate, that what you've actually went through. I don't think you get the credit for actually pushing through and actually still being here because... It's not just, listen, we all fuck up. I've made many mistakes. I've fucked married women. I've fucked friends, girlfriends. Once, drunken, fucked, partying, whatever. But to carry something on for eight years is, is fucking terrible. It's barbaric, basically, but to do it. And not just doing it with having an affair, but doing it to your brother. Do you know what I mean? When somebody's trying to act squeaky clean. So it can, it can be difficult. So I don't know how what, you actually, what you've actually went through to still be here telling the tale. It must be fucking well, difficult. It, it, it never really that stuff like that has never really crossed my mind because of my journey of my life. It's 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 strengthened me mentally as I've gone on. Yes, it was difficult times, but you know you have people you probably couldn't have done it without Will Miller, my friend Daniel. Without them, especially when it first happened, when I went to Will's and with his wife Michelle and his family, it was such like a sanctuary for me. And it was just, yeah, Will's been like a brother for me for like 20, 25 years now. So, and I've got a good friend, Daniel, who's a strong friend. So you need them strong people. But family-wise, there was nothing. So when that came out, your message fucked off to Marbella? Yeah, Max Clifford. So she sold the story? Max Clifford. So she never even gave you the heads up. The no. woman's been fucking you around for eight years with um, your brother. She sold the story, fucked off to Spain, and you have to read that in the paper? A mum. Brought the paper at six o'clock in the morning. What was going through your mind? Just shock. Just shock. What couldn't you? Just shock. It took probably about four or five years to properly get over. This is why I couldn't, I wouldn't talk about it. Or, but now I know I talk about it probably mostly just to annoy people. Because it, so it keeps on coming up, keeps on coming up. This kid, they had eight years to think about the consequences and repercussions. Well, He's fucking waking some, woken someone up, but he didn't want to wake up because I was quiet. I was settled down, and yeah, I just do things now just to piss people off, and there's nothing you can do about it. But to do that is like <clears throat> to have all that money, to have all that fame. You could fucking, you could be getting any bud. You could be doing what the fuck you're doing. You could get hookers up to your room and telling them to fuck off. But to do that to your fucking blood, to do that to your brother, and I'm sorry to disrespect your kid's mum, but both of them are wrongings for doing that, brother. Do you know what You're I mean? Six months pregnant. And while you're still sleeping with him? And then the weekend after we come back and get married, he's my... Yeah, so it just went on and on. Did, have you spoke to Ryan's missus? Because she must have went through a tough time as well. Is yeah. it Stacey? Yeah, yeah, but she, yeah, she probably... No, she stuck it out as long as she could. Let's, let's be right. She, she stuck it out as long as she could because the amount of shit she had to put up with. And I don't really get, didn't really get on with her. Didn't really dislike her, just didn't really get on with her, didn't really... But, you know, no one's deserves to be put through shit like that. No one. So, 
she stuck it out as long as she could and I'm glad she's happy now. You know, Max, I, I don't really know Max too well, but he's a really nice lad and comes from good stock, so I'm glad she's happy. Yeah, that's the main thing. Mm. So what was your life like once it all broke out? How was it to be to get be around the kids and stuff and and try and keep the pieces together? And try and that's keep the, yourself that's together. That's the only thing I concentrate on. That's the only thing I concentrate on now. That's the only thing that's on my mind is you, you've got three children. That's the only thing that I worry about. And the sad thing, and he's never apologised. Not really. That's fucking sad, man. I've not really seen any of them, you know. I was like, probably seen them twice in 10 years. But that will still break your heart because what I can see with you is the sensitivity as well. That you would, there's no no matter what's happened, I believe that you would try and put all the pieces together just to have a family yeah, home. Why, why? <laughs> but they obviously think I'm that bad. I'm not that bad. Don't beat up women. Don't cheat on people. Don't do that shit anymore. I'm a grown man. Because your brother was in the papers again, was it last year? For, I don't know if he was fighting with his message, but you called him OJ Simpson. Yeah, that was just. Ting- you know what? It was. It was. A, it, was a, it was tongue and cheek. But when I thought about it, I thought, you know what? This isn't a subject he should be fucking joking about and messing about with. So I deleted it, and it, I wish I'd never done it. But that was only because we say, well, he's murdered someone. Oh, I'm dealing with facts. He didn't get done for murder. He got off of it. But he was a football player. He beat at women. Do you think there's a lot of more stuff get swept under the carpet? No comment. So going through all that then when it all came out, because obviously we are Mrs. Prancing about and Big Brother and stuff, and it must be so difficult because it's not just a normal affair for someone. Your stuff is worldwide press, so every time you walk along the street, I go out the boozers, do you feel as if people were looking at you, talking about you? Yes, but you've got to realise I've been dealing with this now for 30 years, so it's just like water for ducks back. And what would you have done if you'd seen them a couple of weeks after it? Mm. Don't know. Don't know. Difficult one, isn't it? Yeah. And now your mum, your mum's still not. If spoke... I'd seen him walking on the street, I would have run him over. Yeah. No doubt about it. And your mum's still not spoke to you since. No. no. So why are you getting the blame? As if you've done something I'm, wrong? I'm, no. Supposedly talk to the press. I do this. I tell stories. It's all crap. It's all crap. The amount of people that I know, it's just crap, just crap. So they believe whatever they want to believe, you know, it, I think it really goes deeper, deeper from, you know, I'm a dad's kid and she's his. How's it looking back and all bringing back? Cause does it not feel as if it was still yesterday for you or have you kind of, because it's the same shit no matter if you're doing it, because people are always still going to talk about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Even but, being here, how does that? Yeah, but, how do you think about it? Like, think. I don't really anymore. If I don't really think about it, I'll think about it now because we're having a chat about it. But I'll go out. I can put things in a box and just leave it there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, people think, "Well, yeah, but you're gonna have to deal with stuff." I have dealt with it, but now it's in the box and I can put it away. Do you miss all the family? Mm, it's been that long now. No. You've kind of blocked it all yeah, out. Yeah, I've got three kids. I've got three kids to worry about. They've not even met my six-year-old son, and yeah, not seen my fourteen-year-old son for you know. He's going to have to put up this same shit because he has a surname same as me. That's all it is. They see gigs because there's no gigs he's about. It's only our name, so you're obviously related to him, and he's going to put going to have to put up with the same shit. How many kids have you got? Three. How do you protect your kids from this? Because when they go to well, you just got to school them as best you can. You're going to get idiots trying to wind you up. If you let them wind you up, then that's what they want and they've won. You've just got to keep on drilling that down to them. My do daughter, you... she's 20, 21. She's got a different name, so she kind of gets away with it. So, But my two boys, they're, they're going to have to deal with it. Yeah, Mrs. Is it Natasha, she was in the papers four years ago saying that she would have you back or she's working to get you back. Was that bullshit? No, yeah, no. She's, she's, we have a good relationship now. Good. We have a good relationship. We, you know, she's got a 14-year-old son who, who plays it off each other, so we can't be fucking messing about. We've got to be in sync. And, yeah, that's the most important thing. I put everything else to side because, you know, it's, you've got to try and stop it affecting us them as much as possible. Do you think she was manipulated and kind of groomed to because of Ryan's stature? No, so then, no. She, 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 I could name 10 footballers that she'd been with. 
Did you know this at the time or was it after? No, it was after. One of them, and I'm with some, after it all happened, we went to Portugal and I'm with two naughty lads. And as I've walked in one of the bars, one of the guys is stood right behind the door with his mate. And I've walked to the bar and as I've walked to the bar, I've turned and all you can see is the door shutting. <laughs> and got... That's nuts. That was Phil Bardsley. What was that? So that was yeah. two that was it? Was what about Dwight York, Phil Bardsley? Knew about Dwight, Phil, Phil Bardsley, uh, Danny. Oh, you go on and on. How the fuck did how did, uh, did you know this then? No, no. But after that, no. Was it kind of a relief? Like even though it's sick, but was it yeah. kind of you know what? Well, I've kind of fucked up. But at the end of the day, what, you've got three beautiful. The, you've the three ironic beautiful. bit was is she's turned into what I was. Mm-hmm. she was just cheating lying and that was me so it's kind of calmer in a way you can't believe in something not expect it to hit you yeah. so that's the way, kind of way I look at it you can't treat the way women you can't treat the way women the way you have and not expect it to come back and bite you in the ass. yes it was a big fucking bite in the ass, but that's you know, not just a big bite no, sake, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's no, but taking that's, your whole ass that's, off man. but that's the way I looked at it and mm-hmm. it's made me a better yeah. person for it and you get three beautiful kids. Yeah. Ryan had a pregnant as well, is that correct? And had her got an abortion, is that true? And it was in the papers? Yeah, I don't. No? Yeah. Yeah. What about all the like, kids and stuff, like DNAs and that? Is, no, that was that, that was that was the first thing I did. Was it? In the week, yeah. How hard was that then, waiting for your results? Yeah. Because no. I just you, just, you know, my instincts yeah. is really good. You just know. And then have, that would have been really, that would have been probably more mentally damaging. Push you over the edge, you think? Yeah, yeah. You've been through some shit, mate. That is some heavy stuff, it is. Like, people don't realise, like, some men can't look, take no, it. No psychiatrist, no help, no nothing, just friends just talking it through. So maybe it would have, I would have healed quicker if I did talk to professional people, but yeah. Was that a lonely time for you? Uh, parts, yeah. Parts. When did she come back from Spain? Oh. When was the first time you spoke after oh. it came out? Uh, probably about 10 days. Because they're all scared to come. They're all scared because they all thought that I'm a, a madman, I'm crazy, I'm going to kill them all. Oh, it was quite calm, very calm. Because if you lose your temper, then... No. You could have went on yes. a killing spree. Yeah. Numb to it. Yeah. How much did she get paid for the story? Do you know? I don't, I pass, I don't know. I don't know. So she's made money from oh, yeah. your 100, misery. 100 odd grand anyway, yeah. But the main objective is you're building bridges now, which is oh, amazing. We're all fucking we're, make mistakes. People yeah, do grow up. We're but fine. That, listen, I can switch and I'll, I can say what I want to say. But yeah, in the most, we're fine. How long were you seeing each other for? Uh, eight years. So just from the start of your 2003 to 2011. Like, what about like Christmas parties, parties, stuff like that? Was there never any thing in your mind that you think he's fucking up to something? Did you know he cheated before? Or with other women? <laughs> yeah, were you doing it together or anything? Um, well, he, this is what I used to thought that he had good friends, but yeah, not, not really now because the, the amount of stuff that... Then the ironic thing is about that is all his friends would do it as well. But the most ironic thing about that, their girlfriends would do it as well because I went out with one of their girlfriends who was in their crowd. So I know what both sides do. So they're all at it. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. Remember the old programme Footballers' Wives? They were all, uh, all at it. just all, all fucking at each other. This place in Worcester, this is why I don't uh, drink now or socialise anymore. Everyone's shagging everyone. And you could be your mate. But you don't tell him because it's fucking it's nah, warped. That's, it's warped. That's fucking yeah. It's wrong. Rats. I'm thinking, what am I doing? In you this? look at John Terry. What he done with Wayne Bridge as well. Do you know what I mean? It's it's sad. It's a sad state of affairs that that can happen. But it just shows you actually what goes on behind closed doors. I got one of his mates saying, "Ryan, what are you doing? This is your kid's wife. What are you doing?" But no, come in my house. Yeah, I'll have an house for you to do whatever you want to do. 
It's fucking sad that the fact that she was pregnant and and how the fuck can you do that to your brother? I, I don't get it. Listen, <clears> I was a bit of a boy back in the day, but I had some fucking morals. I'd like to think, like, I've done a lot of bad shit, but I've done bad that, that's, stuff, some, that's some sick, fetish, fucking degrading. It's just a very, very selfish, selfish person. Is he a lonely man? Well, he must be. He must be. I'm quite comfortable in, in my own skin, in, in, in my own company. This is, this, this is why it's been no problem in lockdown for me. But, yeah, people like that have always need to have people around them and pamper them. And, yeah, it's, it's always ne- ne- stuff like that's never been for me. To get put up on a pedestal, like people... Yeah, he, he deserved to be in a pedestal because his career oh, speaks for player, itself. Yeah, yeah. But medals no one fun. gives a shit about that anymore because we live in a negative world and all what people want to talk about is a negative shit. So he's done that, not me. He's ruined his legacy, not me, by fucking doing what he did. He's got the best career in the world. He's he, absolute world-class footballer. But no one will remember that, unfortunately. What what hurt you the most out of all that? Um, all of it. Yeah? Of it, yeah. Were you ever suicidal? No. No. Too strong for that? Just got kids stuff yeah, yeah. You, that's what all the things about any, any negative thing oh wait a minute why would I put more shit on, on my kids how am I fucking fucked from my childhood all the shit they've been through and then that it'd just be so wrong. why did your mum this on you what, what, what is it you've done to that everybody's kind of neglected I, I sell you. stories I do this I do that I'm, I'm, I can't be trusted it's all crap it's all lies prove it how would you feel if your mum phoned you just now? Great. See my kids if you want. Yes. I'm not interested so anymore. I'm not really interested. The doors, really interested. The doors are open for her. Yeah, I'm not, I don't really care. I'm not really thinking about it. I've got three children to concentrate on. Yeah. And you've done that, which yeah. is the main thing. Yeah. Fuck, to keep your shit together, mate, honestly. <laughs> I've not, like, fair play. Fair play. And it must be difficult to even bring it back up and bring back a lot of emotions this, and memories. But this is what I mean. It doesn't anymore because... After about, it took five years, like five years to get over. What did you do in that five years? Did you ever get back with Natasha? Did you ever... We tried, we then went to Cyprus to Paphos, but it was just, mentally I was like, nah, I can't do this. Too many thoughts going through it. your head. Did it, she yeah. ever get help? I'm not sure. Do you know what I mean? That I'm She sure. must have, done, to do all that yeah. shit as well, man, she's, that must be difficult. But that'll play she's back prob- her mind as she gets older. Oh, I know she probably regrets it now because she was young and daft, and people make daft mistakes. But how old was she? When she was when it was happening, probably twenty one. So she's a very young girl, twenty two. Seeing someone playing for Manchester United, that is a massive turn on. No matter who it is, no matter who you're married to, but you've still got to have more respect and more morals for yourself, especially your your man. Were you married? Engaged? Married in two thousand ten. The year before it came out? Yeah. Yeah. Who was your best she man? Said, she said to me, she went, uh, Will, Will Miller. Uh, so she said, uh, when she got married, she went to see a, a clairvoyant and she said, you'd be, you'd be divorced within the year. <laughs> I need to see that clairvoyant. She was bang on. <laughs> That's fucked up. Rodri, that is fucked up, mate. I don't know how you've managed to pull it all together. And on it, I, I genuinely don't, mate. Like, to have that all over the press and world news, and it's fucking nuts, mate. Well, the, the Paddy Power stuff helped. The, the advert, yeah. listen, we'll touch on the advert because the advert's funny as fuck. Like, that's not even revenge. It's not even, it's a dig, it's but it's, 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 a, it's, a, as well. yeah, it's a light dig because it's funny. It is funny as fuck. How did that idea come about? You know what, they asked me in 2000, late 2018, I'm thinking, hmm, I don't know. And I've seen an interview with Ricky Gervais, he said, and it was this afterlife was coming up, he said, literally, you can you know, make comedy into anything. I thought, you know what, he's right. If it's, and I spoke to Will, and he said, well, if it's decent, if it's written well, if it's done. And then, yeah. It was written brilliantly, yeah, was, yeah. talking about The director loyalty. was brilliant, everyone was brilliant on it. 
I couldn't have done it without him. And yet you get more shit for doing that as if you were doing <laughs> something wrong. People you know need what? to wake and the you fuck know, up and realise you know what? what you've went through. When it come out, there was very, very little neg- negativity I got. Because I'm big on Twitter and Instagram. Very, very little negative. You're going to get one or two. But that was it. And I was really surprised when you're seeing like... On YouTube, it's like five million, six million, and, like, fuck, you know? yeah. and then it's banned. And then mm-hmm. Paddy Power, like, banned, great. Yeah. They don't give a fuck. No. <laughs> they do not care. So, was that a good reaction then at the start? Yeah. When did how did it start? But I, I've only seen positive messages from it. Yeah. How was it sitting on like GMTV and all the breakfast shows? Do you feel as if they I don't like stuff like they it. scrutinize? Yeah. yeah. It's just it pick just, and plod. Do you seem no, as if just, you get uncomfortable? It's just life it's just not for me stuff like that it's yeah. Just, yeah it's just not mm-hmm. you do it because you, you know it's part, part of the gig but yeah i don't really when did you like, get your story across the first time straight away or was it years later no it was um i spoke to my family and they said no don't do anything we'll, we'll, we'll build bridges we'll sort it out blah blah this blah blah that and for a year i didn't hear nothing and then she went in celebrity big brother and then just went to... how was that for you Weird. Because Do you think that's what she craved? Not, I, said her, I, said her, I said, don't, you open yourself up here, don't. But she wanted the money. And then, yeah. Do you think part of Natasha claimed uh, wanted fame? Yes, but then when she's seen it and thought, mm, no, nah, no thanks. It's fucked up, it's, it's no. bullshit. No. Do you think you could have been a stepping stone, you getting used to then get into other circles? <laughs> Well, I've always been wary of that all through my life, and then I've obviously get with her, and probably probably got the worst person I could ever get with. Why the <laughs> fuck were you so blinded? I even know, though I you're, know, you're so on the ball as well. No, it was me. Inst- and me instinct was telling me this is wrong. This is wrong. Get out of it for years, and I just ignored it. Like my mm. friends, like even though it's sad, you still give someone the heads up. Like everybody knows something. There's always secrets. The secrets never get held for very long. There's always somebody slips up. Maybe drunk, I tell a loved one, and then it's like Chinese whispers. Well, about four years in, I had a conversation with mum saying he's asleep, and she assured me that he wasn't. What gave you the inkling that he was? Uh, we we split up, and it, it was at, um, we was out in Manchester, and I was supposed to uh, meet her, and United had just won the league, and she wasn't turning up. But I wasn't speaking to our kid at the time, so she thinks I wouldn't turn up to the... Because every time they won the lead, they'd have a party in the living room. It's not living room, Dean's Gate. Yeah, yeah. So they'd have a party in there. So she thought, because I'm not speaking to him, he won't come here. I just fucking turned up, straight in. And I, she, 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 when she turned around, she's like... And then... Do you think... I, I smashed the phone when I seen messages, but the messages were off him. But I didn't know. They were off him. I just seen the messages and smashed the phone. What were they saying? I can't remember saying I'll, I'll meet you somewhere. I'll meet or where? I can, yeah, I can't really remember the details. But even though this was going on for that eight years, was he still looking you in the eye? Were you still having like a brotherhood and still doing stuff? On and, and off, yeah. But playing golf and stuff. He was like, yeah, I've heard you got an, <laughs> I've heard, in, in the buggy together. I've heard you got a new bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just banged last week. Yeah. Yeah. Sleek it though. Very sleek. Do you think he was maybe telling her stuff that you were doing, even though you weren't as well, to fuck with her head? And he, she was, he was saying to her, why is he doing, where is he getting this money from, why is he doing this? And they all think I'm a drug dealer and selling drugs. Mm-hmm. There's no drugs in my life. Just wheeling de- wheel and deal. He was jealous when she was pregnant with your kid. Pardon? He, she, your missus said that she, Ryan was pre- jealous that she was pregnant with your kid. Probably. Why, man? Fucking this why? Is fucking weird. It's nuts. Weird. It's fucking annoying me. Like, when I was watching the video, it was, man, because it's fucking sad. Like, that ain't normal. That ain't normal for a man to be doing that for so fucking when long. You, when you've got with people like this, when from a young age, they're giving everything and no one really says no to them. And so they get pampered, they get spoiled. So spoiled kids, they think they can just have everything it's without want, yeah. any consequences. Any and yeah. Any, yeah. It's nuts, man. Like, was it other football players? But you see it with well? people, they, they get too big for the station. I think they can do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. Not realising who they're breaking yeah, and down, destroying. Con- it's all, you always come down. Yeah, because it's just the ripple effect then. It's like, listen, it takes two to tango. Both to blame. But to run it over eight years, 
and the misery that's caused even 10 years later that there's got to be some remorse surely a fucking letter to say look I'd fucked up I'm a bit older now we've got kids we're going to have grandkids in the future like family's everything to me everything I do is to get my family out and make better life for them like I'm not making much just now, but I know I will. And but I know when I do, I'll look after the people who worked with me. Like if you're earning, it, like I see it all the time. Like footballers and their dads are fucking homeless, and their brothers are struggling, or their sisters are penniless. I'm thinking, why? Fucking lend a hand, no matter what they've done, man. Where's your fucking soul? Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's fucked up, man. That like, maybe that's why we haven't got. Why we haven't got? Because we're so fucking soft. Do you know what I mean? That well, like you said before, when we before we come on air, you know, even though I've money and I've got money now, and and you and you've earned a little bit of money, it still doesn't make you you're still searching for stuff to make you really really happy. You know that that money's for your kids and for you to to build a house for them, and so they don't have to struggle or they don't get thrown out when they young. If they do get thrown out, they've got their own house. So yeah, it's. So how have you built your life then in the last 10 years? Do you feel as if when it was totally destroyed, how have you managed to try and put some pieces oh, it was, together? It was just the struggle at the first, I moved away and I got a house with a friend and then and then I ended up getting a house with Cy, Cy Heaton, who was friends with Ricky Atten, and they would go out every night drinking because they were like drinkers. So they would go out and I'd be like, oh, come on then. But it wasn't for me. They they go out, they have a good drink and they have a good time. I can't do it night and night, day after day. So it was getting too much. And then, you know, gone out on a Thursday night. And it's like Friday, one o'clock afternoon. I'm like, fucking hell, what am I doing? What am I doing? And that was it. Did, you, did drink make you worse? Problems a hundred times worse? Well, I've never been arrested sober. <laughs> That tells you something then, doesn't it? That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's just tell, it, tell it a lie. I got a, a, a caution from when it, all that shit come out and she was opening a mail and she wouldn't let me in the house and a car was parked outside so I just fucking walked to a car and she went, fuck off with one of my wing mirrors. Walked to the other one and went, fuck off with the other one. It was, I still think, laugh about it today because they just fucking went... <laughs> and every time I used to see her, I'd pick the kids up Fucking wing mirror to me. Why did she open your mail? <laughs> Why did she open your mail? And she was winding me up. Like, eh, like. And it's, it's the ones that are always up to no good, the ones that are always most paranoid as well, as, which can be difficult. So over the last 10 years, we've tried to, what about work-wise and just how have you been getting <clears> over that? Well, I'm a coach football, but I thought, like I said before, come on, I'm a class two license. I'm mean, a truck driver for 2001, I got it. I loved it. I loved it. Worked for Northwest Paper, the paper company, for like five or six years. And yeah, just done that. And then uh, I've got pro I've got a, a f I had a flat in. I bought a flat in London, a studio flat in uh, 1999, 90, 92 grand in 1999. And the mortgage ended in 2019. So I got that. Obviously, Paddy Power stuff. And then. Yeah, obviously, NGN, son for, um, how can I say, I don't know if I can speak about it actually. Yeah, we can take it out if we can. They hacked my phone and it's been settled. So they hacked, the son hacked your phone? Yeah. They've done that with everybody, I had Gaza on a few weeks ago, they've done that with Gaza. They've done it with loads, mate. It with um, loads. Who else was I speaking to the they hacked their phone? Yeah, so, sleek it bastards. How they would go, and th that's how people end up paranoid and turn into drinking drugs. But I would never, because I was like on the ball, me. I would never let, I'd be on the phone, because always doing stuff that, you know, it wasn't always legal. So you'd never be talking on the phone or leaving messages on the phone. So, yeah. yeah. Money for nothing, cheers. What about relationships? You've been in any serious relationships since the I've last 10 a, years? Maybe, yeah, I've got a, a six year old with. I was living with Ashley for about, um, when did we start with Ashley? It was probably around about 2006, 2014, 15. And the most, probably the most trustworthy girl I've ever met. Just really could rely on and trust her, which was, which was massive. 
You know, if I would have, would have got with another girl who was not like her, it would have been could have been nasty. But yeah, she's she's a really good mum and really good person. Trust really trustworthy though. Really like ride and die with her. So to go from that the kind of toxic relationship you're into that relationship was it hard at the start to learn how to trust? No, because I I, I kind of knew what kind of person she was straight from the bat. That proper Salford, you know, really could rely on a really honest person. Did she know your whole story and what you'd went through as yeah. well? Yeah. You kind of need someone who's kind of good heart, good soul to... Yeah, stick by you through anything, just whatever, even if it's not in your favour, she still stick by you. Because it's a lot of baggage as well that yeah. you're bringing to the table as well, do you know what I mean? So she would need to be fucking strong <laughs> no. because... No, she is, yeah. If you're putting the papers, then you know yourself, look after your loved ones as well, and that can be difficult, especially if somebody's not being brought up in that life. Yeah, well, yeah. and if any one contacted her, she would just say, fuck off straight away and yeah. tell me, and tell me pick up the phone and ring me straight mm-hmm. away. No one ever's bothered her or my bothered her. So you've never had a book out or anything, no documentary? No, but but we just started a book this week, actually. Have you? In October, November. Good stuff. Yeah. No, people have always asked me to do a book for the last, for the last 10 years. I'm thinking, yeah, what do I need to do a book for? But Why the fuck not? Why not make some money from your misery? Mm. Why not? Because a lot of people who I've had on the show who write books, it's their therapy. That's your chapter to say, I'm closing this yeah, fucking chapter. Yeah. No. Paddy Powers, that, it was a good therapy thing. It was, but doing doing it all, and it was brilliant. It was such a good experience. What were you doing when you were making it? Were you thinking? Because you're taking the piss out yourself. You People need to understand, you're the one who got fucked over. <laughs> so you're taking the piss out yourself. Well, obviously, you'd have ruffled a few feathers, but that's okay. You fucking deserved it. You didn't go on a killing spree. You done an advert to take the piss out yourself and you're getting fucked over for eight years straight. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> people fucking t- fucking you over and laughing behind your back and, and doing what they did. So I think it's only fair that you go, do you know what? Wait a minute. I ain't fucking taking this lying down. Here's a joke. Now I'm going to write a book and fucking expose the rest of your mugs. <laughs> Just fucking do it. You've got the right. You have got the free pass to stand your ground and put your whole life as therapy into a book and just becoming clean and this would have never ever happened and we've never have done anything like this if if it wasn't so severe or yeah it's just a bad thing to happen so i'm just going all guns blazing now i think rightly so i think go for it man get the face paint on get the grenades in the pocket and just go fuck it let me turn that on <laughs> <laughs> and go for it why not are you excited for a book for the future um do you think a lot of people behind them for cover? Probably. Mm-hmm. Probably. No, no, not 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 really. No. So just say fun, yes, fun, mate. Fun. People don't promote the book today. I'll just say I'm <laughs> fucking them all. I'm going to expose the books. They'll have to read it and find <laughs> out. <laughs> if you I'm sorry if I keep touching on this, but if your brother had phoned you, would you would you put it all together? Would you accept his apology? Yes. Gone now. We need to move yeah. on from it. This is why <clears throat> I think he dropped a clanger because if he would have done what he would have said and then just get pictures of us wherever or doing what, whatever and just being brothers, then people think, oh, he's got on with it. But no, he chose to ignore me, chose to go the way he went. It was the wrong one. I think he's ashamed. Would you? Yeah. Any normal person yeah. would be, and any mother would be, but, you know, I'm still the bad one. I hope it all gets put together for you. You can still see that you're still battling with it no matter what, and I can tell that you still love your family no matter how much, th- what they've done or who's fucked you over. Listen, you're no fucking saint, but who is can <laughs> listen to the stories what people have done to you. Do you know what no. I mean? So it's funny, it's the ones who are the black sheep that get their fingers pointed, but it's the ones who are hiding in the, the proper white sheep's wool that go under the radar because everybody thinks they're, they're golden and this will make this mistakes. Will be, this would be taboo. This, oh, you can't say anything. You can't talk. You can't do anything. Your brother can do what the fuck he wants. Clearly. And you've, you've got to suffer through it with all the crap that you've got to put with, but you can't say anything. You can't do anything. You can't 
Just stay there and shut up. Have you felt as if you've been getting told that your whole life? No, no I was happy to do that. But you can't do what you've done and expect me to fucking lie down and be quiet about it. I'm going to piss people off. Even when people don't want to hear it, I'm just going to keep on banging it down the fucking throat because he did this, not me. I was happy. I was happy with quiet, the family. Still quiet, no trouble, going to work, five to nine, nine to five job, happy as Larry. Did Natasha say sorry to you? Yeah. 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 She seemed to have been, like I say, young girl, man, made her mistakes. It fucking is what it is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, she's still mother to my child. Exactly. So, so you've got to kind of respect her for that way. Your kids love her, so it is what it is. You just kind of got to move on. I, I, we had, she had a son to a previous relationship too, and I had a good relationship with him, and that was just ruined. You know, I uh, come into his life when he was like two, and then he was like 10, 11 when all this shit happened. So I built a quite a good relationship with him and that was just totally gone. And then, you know, he goes to school and he gets in bits of mind. He's come out the other end now. He's, he's got a good plumbing job and he's doing well for himself, but yeah. So it doesn't just, uh, this is what people need to understand. It ain't just affecting you. It affects a whole fucking line of people through for years to come because people are always going to talk about it now, 20 years, 30 years. You will get immune to it. You will get stronger to it when it's just water off a duck's back. But I still think people still to feel the wrath of you, what you can bring to the table to really put it into you. Everybody else has made money from it, so why the fuck can't you? Do you know what I mean? You're the one that had to suffer. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So going forward for the future, brother, what's the plans? We've got, pause, we've got the book in, in production just now. What else we got? Just getting back to coaching, really, you know, because we've been in lockdown and stuff. Just get back out there and, yeah, coaching, doing stuff like, that you love to do and... Do the properties as well, and I hire my Bitcoin at the minute and stuff like that. My my crypto, so yeah, and about that just yeah, now. So that's quite good, and yeah, just see what see what happens. Are you excited for the future? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm like you. I've got a new dog. I've got to go like that every time <laughs> I finish. I'm not, no, yeah, yeah. it's a nightmare. Yeah. Absolutely, I've got a beagle. He's a nightmare. <laughs> just choose yeah, everything. Yeah, there's fucking nuts. Every little noise, he's like fucking. I'm like I've got to walk around like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that your first dog? Yeah, yeah. That they put a smile on your face. Like if yeah. I could have just a dog, a house full of dogs and no fucking <laughs> humans, mate, I'd be happy. Because every like, everybody's got problems. Everybody's got issues. No matter who you are, no matter what football team you play for, no matter if you're no money. Well, I say it all the time, but everybody's battling at some degree. Your brother will be battling. Natasha will be battling. You're battling. Your new missus will be but Everybody's battling some sort of... We, we deal with our problems and worries through external things, whether that's sex, whether it's drugs or alcohol or violence. We deal with stuff. We're all, fu- we're all fucking confused. Nobody knows what the fuck's going on on this planet. Like, I question it. Like, like I say, Zen, I'm, I'm doing a six-week documentary just now. I've created one of the biggest podcasts on the planet. I travel the world making my own documentaries. But I'm, I wasn't happy. Everything that I created over the last three years, I thought I'd be fulfilled. I thought this is what make me happy. Mm. But looking at it all, it's all fucking bullshit. Like, it's not really, it's irrelevant when you're not really working within. So the new six-week documentary, no social media, which I found a massive... I do that every. I do that yeah. anyway. Yeah. Come off it. Boxing Day, I come off it for three weeks. New Year's, all that crap, just... Just come, off, just come off it, yeah. Because mm-hmm. it, re- it affects me. Twitter, I don't so much because Twitter's just full of weirdos anyway. So, <laughs> that is. But Instagram yeah. is just fake, fake, yeah. fake, fake. Mm-hmm. And it's just too much sometimes. It's like, fuck off. Yeah, to look at that is um, difficult because you're, as soon as you wake up, you're looking at other people's lives. You're looking at a fake screen. You're looking at an illusion. So you're not in reality anymore. I want to come back. I want to take a couple of steps back and, and really get into a program where I'm doing everything within. So no social media, I'm doing meditation every day, yoga every day, exercise every day, yeah, cold water exposure every day. And I've went vegan. There's, there's there's two flips of the coin with that, but I just want to try it and see how it is. And if I can vegan, get... that's no fish, no fi- nothing. No, nothing. So but in Manchester today, and I just went a wee shop with like bean rice and... A lot of chickpeas. Uh, yeah, yeah, so listen, I'm struggling, but I'm doing it. Nick's got his chicken curry and he's, I'm just not rubbing it in. But do you know what? I'm feeling good from it. I think people need... A lot of people are struggling 
my platform has grown and I don't want to become a fraud. I don't want to become a fake. I felt as if I was slipping into that, posting shit and giving me attention. Tell me how great I'm doing. But it wasn't making me happy. So I identify with this straight away. I'll make the changes. I want to make a documentary to show people what can be done physically, mentally, emotionally, with doing things more natural. It's good you are seeing that now and not 10 years down the line yeah. but you're still relatively young and you yeah. can do all that st- stuff. So I don't want to come across as sitting in big cars and big watches and pretending that I'm fucking it's, life's great. It's, it's, it's all bullshit. It's all crap. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all, fake. It's so all pretentious yeah. crap. Mm-hmm. Who cares what car you drive? Do you get... Wealth, health is wealth. That's, million you know. percent. Do you get... You've still kept lean. You've still kept fresh. Why is that? You're still exercising? Yeah. Do exercise. I just don't post it. I just do exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's See, posting yeah. it. I run, must probably run 5, 10k a day. Yeah. Just don't post. Just don't... It's not really a workout though unless you've not posted that. No, it. it's no, but, no, but it's, it's just like 5k. It's like 20 minutes. Tops. That's good time. And, and with the dog... Now it's he'd be just energetic, just so just go out bike ride with him or running with him. Bring a lot of life into you. Yeah, no. I've got punching bag in my garden. I've got weight bed in my garden. I've got skipping rope. So I do all the stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Do you get a lot of trolling still? Do Pardon? you ever get trolled? Social trolled? media. No, 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 not really. I banter with it, me. Twitter. If you're taking Twitter Twitter's seriously, you're fucking. You're fucked. Yeah, you're fucked. You would be suicidal so, within fucking two hours. Rod James Giggs. Yeah, what is all your social media plug at all? Yeah, at, at Rod James Giggs. Um, and my Twitter, my Instagram's private, so my Instagram's Rodri2477. So, so no trolling, just people just getting on it, having a bit you of banter? Tr- you get trolls. It's always usually football. I'm, I, I'm a wind-up merchant, so mm-hmm. I'm always winding football fans up. So, yeah, you got to take it as well. You what it, team do you it. support? Oh, that's... See... Growing up, it was it was never like Ryan was always Manchester United. Where I was like, I'd follow players. So because John Barnes was black, and I kind of gravitated to him. So I was a John Barnes fan, a Luther Blissett fan. So Watford in the early days, and then when John Barnes went to Liverpool, I kind of supported Liverpool. But obviously, when Ryan started playing United, playing for United, and you learned the history and and all the things that go round with it, you just can't help but fall in love with it. Because you know, even though it's the, probably the biggest club in the world, it still is a massive family club. Yeah. You know, within the, the training ground and the club, the people, are, you know, it still is a family club. And yeah, learning the history and obviously the, the, the rides of the the cups that they win and the, the, you know, being at Barcelona, the, the 99 year, I probably missed one or two games. I went every single game. Getting so, all the tickets on nothing though. Yeah. How yeah. was that then at that era when you had gigs, when you had the oh, Nevilles and Beckhams and Scolzies and Butts? How how did... Were you ever starstruck as well to become the norm? I was never starstruck because of an early age and I used to see them always get mithered so I would think... Ugh. So I'd never like kind of pester them or mither them. You'd see them about and say hello and be nice to them like... David Beckham, really nice, Scolz, but... Um, who else? Uh, the Devils, but mostly them lot, Andy Cole, Dwight York, Paul Ince. So you kind of get friendly with them, but you never really pester them because you always, they always get pestered and admired, but really nice lads. David Beckham was, you know, the shit that he put up with and he was, just didn't change. Yeah. Just always stayed the same. Such a nice lad. Great family, you know. And the same with the others as well. You had great families. How was it? Did you ever become very, very close with any other players? No, no. no like I said, I, I always told kept, to keep back from like you. A, like, <laughs> like I said, well, I always just look out for him because I was always with naughty pe- people. people. Yeah. So when they was there, we'd always like look out for more, made sure if anyone was my other room, time to do one. But yeah, n- never really pissed him. But they were all, they're all good lads. What was Ferguson like? I only really spoke to him a See, couple of times. No, I only really spoke to him when I was when I was younger, so he was nice to me then. I was like 14, 15, so he was playful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He would have probably thought, though, stay back from him if you're causing it, getting expelled from school. Mm. But when you'll actually break it all down, because when I had Gaz on, I says to him, do you think you could have had a better career working under Sir Alex Ferguson? And he says, nah. He says, look what the fucking trouble the other players have got. Can't throw a kick to a fan. Um, 
Beckham is no, stuff, but, he, but, but he treated Cantona differently. Mm-hmm. If anyone else did that, they'd have been out of the club. Because he did it, he was he was eccentric. He was Eric. So he got away with it. He was like the story is the story of like the uh, they've been playing crap or something in the game, and Bruce and someone else thought, you know, we're, we're in the, we're in the clear here because Eric's just two footed someone. So he's come in the change room. He started breaking the players, and then turned to Eric and said, "Eric, you can't do that, son." <laughs> so that he treated was people nuts. Can you imagine a player doing that now? So he. he Treated people that Eric, fucking hell, Eric. There was a cup final. I could say this in my book. There was a cup final, but I can't remember how old it was, 14, 15, and everyone was with the wives. And we went on the train, but Eric was with two blondes. Mind he's married and got kids. I don't know if there was with friends or just, I don't know, but yeah, I remember Paul Ince, Claire, Claire Ince going mad. What the fucking hell is this? What are you fucking doing? We're not here, you fucking can. Going mad. And that's all I can remember. But I don't know what he was doing. It's just a that. team full of shaggers then, isn't it? When you break, <laughs> when you break it all well, down. I don't know if he was shagging. I remember him having two blondes in, but I don't know if he was... But... What was Roy Keane like? Roy Keane was... Uh, I never really met Roy Keane. The interaction I had with Roy Keane, he nearly got Lee Sharp killed. Why? We're in a nightclub in Kells. It's not there, not there anymore, near the airport. And Lee Sharp was going out with a, a Scouse girl, a mixed race Scouse girl. And, and I'm stood at the bar next to her. And Roy Keane's pinched her ass, and then fucking turned away. And she started going sick at me. So after about two minutes, I went, "Fuck this! You better shut the fuck. Get her to shut up, or you're getting a dig." To Sharpie. And then that's when Keane has gone, "Oh, psycho! Calm down! Calm down!" Fucking, you're getting me in trouble, you mate. Was he as ruthless as they say? But he was—he was a drinker, but he doesn't drink anymore. Uh-huh. He was—he was a—he was a heavy drinker, but yeah, he doesn't drink anymore. Was there much drinking going on from the professionals, or did Ferguson really put a stop to that? They because were, everybody they, seems so clean cut back no, then. They were they, no, but they were drinking. But Ryan was—he uh, would drink. On a Saturday, but if they had like a Champions League game or a midweek game, yeah, they wouldn't. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't. Ryan wouldn't. Anyway. The sacrifices that the players must put in as well, even though they do what they do, but to get to that elite level, the fucking sacrifices that they do. It's, oh, yeah, it's, it's massive. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's like, massive. I remember the Premiership being from then when it was Man U on top. I remember those days. Like, I miss that Premiership. It's even like Arsenal had Henri and you had Vieira and. Yeah, it was great. It was great just, matches because they were a real tough. Good start. Yeah, Aston Villa the semi final uh, when he scored that goal. I was you can see me on the treble video. I stiff arm a steward and just run straight onto the pitch, and I'm one of the first ones to jump on top of him. You can actually see it in the treble video. Stone Island cap on. <laughs> <laughs> you must have, even though the shit that you you went through the last ten years, you must have had a lot of great memories though. Oh yeah, brilliant. Do you know what brilliant. I mean? That then the the nineties and. Even the first time when they won the, the the Premier League, the Blackburn game, when he scored a free kick from 25, 25 yards, did not win it for 20-odd years. Old Trafford was buzzing, but yeah, it was some great, great memories. But the, Home Europe, and away. the European Cup, were you there oh, at the Bayern Munich game? Every single game. Bayern Munich game, I was on the floor. We scored the first goal, and we were still celebrating. We're on the floor. We've got a corner, and we're trying to get up, and it's gone in. We're like, ah, it's going, everyone's going fucking mad. It was brilliant. Yeah. That's got to be one of the best games ever. But then the Juventus, Liverpool game as well was good. Juvent- the, the Juventus one. The European Cup final for Liverpool. That's the two best cup finals I've ever seen. Yeah. When Liverpool come back, and then... What was oh, the Juventus final. game? Was that the Roy Juventus Keane? where Roy Keane scored yeah. just before half-time. But every time... United score, we'd celebrate and then realise because the Italians were pissing in bottles, rocks, and just throwing them at us and everything. People coming up the fucking stairs with blood and everything. It was crazy. <laughs> the Italian fans don't cri- fuck cri- about. They were pissing in bottles and just fucking throwing them down because we were at the bottom tier. It was a nightmare. Did you just get any private treatment, family members, friends? Not nah. abroad. Not abroad. The police would, at times, they batten family families. They were bad, the police, foreign police, Italy, Portugal, Spain, really bad. Who's the best player you've ever seen? Zidane. Yeah, Zidane. a genius, eh? Zidane. Mm-hmm. Ronaldo, Zidane. Did you ever meet Ronaldo? No, Fat Ronaldo. Oh, the Brazilian? Yeah. 
Fat Ronaldo. Yeah, his team. At Scored Milan. that trick for Real Madrid against mm-hmm. United, where mm-hmm. United had Ferdinand, Vidic. Who's I know, know Barthez was in, so. Who's the best player you've ever seen at United? Scholes. Scholes, eh? Scholes. What a player. But Ryan's close, though. Ryan's close He's a world class player, man. He, the way he trained from a, a, a flying winger to a mm-hmm. where he could control the midfield, you don't know how difficult that is to do. So, yeah, but Scholes, just the way he, he doesn't look like a player. Nah. Well, I played against him a couple of years ago. I was surprised how fast he was. Just a couple of yards. That he, that, but yeah, just the way he controlled games. Just his mentality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about when Ryan scored the semi-final the FA Cup? Or was it the semi-final, yeah, like was it? I was straight on the pitch. Yeah. As soon as the whistle went, mm-hmm. steward. Was that 40 the best punch, goal ever? Yeah. Or one of the one best of them, goals? Yeah. I like like I say, the, the memories that you must have had that anybody would die for those sort of memories to be so close to those world stars that it just so happens that you went through a bit of misery. But for in Premier League titles, so yeah. yeah. How was that then, being on top and just kind of? It was brilliant. It was brilliant. The way games were so 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 good, cause such a good atmosphere, and they were they were a tidy firm back in them days. So, and I was mixing with him, which was not a great idea. Mm-hmm. They used to be. On the coach, yeah, we'll meet you here. Uh, fucking crazy. What about the, the Ronaldo Portugal? Did you ever meet him? No, no. What was he like? Player. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. When he first come, I remember when they played a pre-season game and he tore John O'Shea and your asshole, and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they just got him from that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The uh, was there any grievances in the players? Because I had Andy Gorham on who played for Rangers. And he came to Man U and Roy Keane did not speak a word to him for three months because obviously the Rangers Celtic, Celtic Rangers thing. Was there any like that mixed with, with the Man U players? Does anybody hate each other? Roy Keane, Terry Sheringham. Hated each Teddy other? Terry Sheringham, Andy Cole. Didn't talk. That's mad though. When you think about Terry Sheringham and Solcha, how they, they, when they used to come on as subs, that, that's what I know Man U from is when getting beat 1-0 and they never died. Yeah, didn't talk. Uh, uh, Andy Cole... He'd done something with Andy Cole and Andy Cole never forget it and yeah, just Cole he just pfft, didn't, nothing. Still that could is. play with him though. Didn't affect him. It's mad though, isn't it? Yeah. No bonds. No. no. But you get that sometimes in football. I've not got really, played football for 20 years, I haven't got really many friends. You're just there to, I was there to play football and win football matches. I haven't mm-hmm. many friends. Did you get any medals yourself? Have you got any? Yeah, we played for FC United, played for for them. Yeah, you won cups and stuff, but yeah. I couldn't tell you where they are. How far do you want to go with the coaching stuff? Do you think you can take it to a higher level? Yeah, well, I, I think I'd rather work with 16, 18 year olds. That's the where youth. I'd be best, yeah. Yeah. Because it's, you know, that's what I've done before identifying, you know, if they're good enough to move on or, or is someone holding them back. Just, yeah, I'd just feel comfortable and I think I could help young lads. Try and not make the same mistakes you yeah, did at an yeah, early age, 16, yeah. 17, 18. Yeah. What do you want to be? Are you messing about? Or are you, you actually really mm-hmm. concentrate and, yeah, and focus think, on football? Yeah, I think that's good for people who's lived it, to have the world at their feet, to then could have went professional at a higher level, but to then fucking it and going, because it's scary. Any sort of sacrifice and consistency is very hard in life because to give up drinking, to give up your friends, to give up everything to then build a career is difficult. No matter what it is in life, it is difficult. But if you've lived it, if you've made the mistakes, you know what needs to be done to stay in the straight and narrow. You've surrounded yourself with winners as well. Plus you've been close to probably one of the best youth teams that's ever come through and you know what they went through ever. and what, what it took ever. to get to that level yeah. and what you've got to sacrifice to get to that level. Mm-hmm. You can't be messing about if you, if you want. Did your dad never pop up when Ryan was going through... Yeah, he put, superstarred them. Yeah, he did, but he just kind of brushed off. Do you ever think how hard it was for Ryan as well? I know we've given him a hard time a bit here, but how hard it was for him to get put into that spotlight when you see all these young kids, singers, actors, they get into superstardom and the pressure and it just changes them. Did he change as an individual? At 17, 18? No, no. He more changed when he was... 35, 36. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Being, being more, more confident because he was not a confident person. He was not yeah. like, like um, um, testimonial against Celtic. He didn't think anyone was going to turn up. 
that's was his meant. Oh, I don't know if going sixty seven thousand people there, but that was his men's site. I don't know if anyone's going to turn up. Yeah, sad to think that like a legend man for what he's done at the game to still be playing at like an older age as well, twenty odd years to doing his craft at the top level is unbelievable to stay with the one team as well and to go on and kick on at Wales. That like, life is life, mate. We all fuck up. I really do hope that you can put the pieces together with the family in the future. I, I, you're a good guy, man. I genuinely mean that. And I, ho- I look forward to your book. Once it's out, we'll get you back on again. Would you like to finish up on anything? No, no. Your friend, no. Corbin Brown, oh, yeah, can promote Cat that? Paul, yeah. But I was saying before that like, he started two, three years ago, but now he's, he's going from strength to strength, so... Yeah, good yeah, on him, man. So you know, we'll put the link in the description yeah. for people who want to buy the clothing brand. But for coming on today, brother, Cheers, and telling your story. No, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, it and I, I genuinely mean that. For anybody watching, maybe at a young age, 14, 15, 16, that's maybe what to get their head down and be a football player, what advice would you give for them? Work hard and concentrate. Eat well, sleep well. It's everything, all the details. You know, if you really, really want to sacrifice and really want to be a footballer, you know, it's, it's not an easy job. You've got to, You've got to sacrifice some stuff. Yeah. Godre, brother, again, Cheers, thank, thank you. Pal. God bless. I'm pal. Cheers. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.